Hey everyone, my name is Chris. I am the lead genius here at South Shore BMW. Thank you for taking the time and watching the video. So today I want to have a conversation about the hotspot that you can find in many of our new vehicles today. And so we have a lot of uh, customers at the time of delivery or after they take delivery reaching out and asking us uh, various questions about the hotspot uh, feature in their vehicle. So um, this is not necessarily something that we usually have uh, often uh, questions coming in about this but for some reason uh, this is a popular thing uh, right now so I figured it would be a good opportunity to make a video and to address these questions because there's a lot of assumptions that are going on here that is not um, actually uh, correct so let's dive into it so the first thing is um, if you do have the hotspot inside of your vehicle uh, that is going that just means you have the hardware you have the equipment to support that feature. Um, initially, when you take delivery, uh, when the car is new, you have three months or three gigabytes, uh, whichever occurs first, that is your free trial. Uh, that trial and any uh, subscriptions, uh, data plans that you would purchase after that trial is all going to be through AT&T. Uh, that is the company, the provider that BMW has partnered with in order to provide that uh, connectivity to our vehicles. Uh, so that's, um, that's pretty much a pretty straightforward process there. Uh, we do have a lot of customers coming in assuming that the data uh, and the, the service is, is free with the vehicle. Since they've purchased the vehicle, it's just there. That's unfortunately not the case. Uh, a lot of customers come in assuming that they can use their own provider. Uh, whoever that may be, that also is uh, unfortunately not the case as well. Uh, so just uh, making sure that you are understanding uh, the services available to you and what exactly is going on in the car, that's gonna set you up to have the best experience because a lot of times uh, customers come in and we have these conversations with them and then they decide uh, afterwards not to actually go ahead uh, with that hotspot uh, because of various reasons and that's fine as well and, and one of the ways where people are kind of seeing that it doesn't make too much sense is depending on the use so obviously if you're uh, for your job if you're traveling and if you're trying to connect a laptop or something to the to the vehicle I certainly can appreciate uh, having that hotspot function there However, maybe if there is someone in the back seat that you're just trying to help them connect a Wi-Fi only iPad, maybe they just want to watch a movie, stream something for a couple of hours. A lot of customers today, they have smartphones, they have unlimited data plans, they have the ability to turn their smartphone into a hotspot um, and uh, they choose to just do that and that's a, a good experience for them as well. So um, it really kind of depends on what you're looking to do and um, it just kind of all comes together at that point in time. So it really is a case by case basis for every customer, but it is important to note that it is a trial initially and then everything is gonna be through AT&T. So let me show you exactly how to set this up because there's also questions as to um, unsure of how to connect this. So what we wanna do is we wanna treat the device that you're trying to connect to the car just like you're pairing a phone. So that's essentially what we're gonna do. So you're gonna go up to where it says COM for communication. We're gonna tap on where it says mobile devices. And then we're going to hit the add new device up in the corner here. And at the bottom of this list here, you can see where it says internet apps uh, via Wi-Fi. That's what we wanna do because we're not trying to pair a phone uh, for phone calls or audio. We're not trying to do Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. We're trying to go right to uh, connecting a device to the vehicle for the intent of uh, getting it connected to the internet. So what we're gonna do at that point is tap on internet apps. You're gonna notice this is gonna be specific uh, for each vehicle but the uh, vehicle name that is going to be what you're going to look for on your device is going to pop up in your wi-fi um, menu there and this is going to be the password this is auto generated so obviously it's not going to be the same for every car it's going to just do this uh, by itself so that is one way of doing that if you want to manually enter those credentials you certainly can just like if you're going to connect to like a, um, a wi-fi at like a hotel or at home or something like that it's the same process but those are the credentials right there for you however to make this a little bit easier if you did open the camera on the device you're trying to connect to the internet snap that QR code that is another way of uh, setting up that process uh, and, and that's 
that's pretty much it. That's everything that you need to do. It is a pretty straightforward process. Uh, once you have those credentials on the screen, you're just going to find that showing up on your device and enter that in there. You'll be good. Now, certain customers have had different experiences. Uh, I can just say personally, when I've done this in my car, what I was asked to do on the device once I connected it um, was there was an AT&T registration page that popped up. I then had to put in my personal information, my payment method, and then select a data plan for after the trial was over. Um, they're not gonna charge you right away, obviously, but they do wanna get you set up with a plan for when the trial uh, is ends, they know uh, where to kind of plug you in and uh, how that's gonna work for you. So you have a seamless experience. AT&T doesn't want you to lo lose any service or have any disruptions uh, from that extent. So I assume if you're someone who's just trying to try it, and you don't want to really uh, purchase it, you certainly could cancel that ahead of the trial expiring or uh, you know, ending there. However, just be mindful that it is three months or three gigabytes. So that's very important to understand because if you have someone streaming a movie or music or whatever the case is using large amounts of data, that three gigabytes, that's going to go really fast. So I wouldn't really be I wouldn't want to tell customers, don't get hung up on the fact that it's three months. I would be more concerned about that it's only three gigabytes. So that's going to go really, really fast. So just be mindful of that, I would say, going forward. And uh, also uh, take a step back and consider what it is you're actually trying to do in the vehicle uh, in order to, what are you trying to connect uh, to the internet? And could your smartphone with your uh, hotspot on that device, with the data plan that you're already paying for, could that be an, a good alternative or do you really need to purchase another data plan for your car? I mean, it just really depends on, on your, on the purpose and you know, what you're trying to do in the vehicle. And that's pretty much everything that I have there. That's the essentials that everyone needs to know about the hotspot inside of your vehicle. Uh, please share the video because I know there's a lot of people out there, especially lately asking questions about this. If you know someone with a, a BMW that has the uh, hotspot function, and they're unsure of how to use it, they're not quite sure of the details, send them the video and uh, hopefully this will be helpful. So again, thanks for watching the video. My name is Chris, I'm the lead genius here at Celsius BMW and uh, please subscribe so you can always stay up to date with our latest content and please stay healthy and safe out there.